Hey guys, so I'm doing a service on this uh, T800 and the customer, or I should say the driver, was complaining it doesn't hold well on hills. So I'm going to show you what I, what I found. Looks like we're going to do some brake cans. So you can see the spring's broken in that one. And. Bring it broken in that one too. So that's a good reason. So we're gonna change the brake can. So first thing to do, that's what I do, is push in the yellow button. So what it does is it sends air to the brake chamber and kind of pulls back, releases it. So then you can remove these two 15 16 heads bolts and then I go inside release the button which will pop that out because it's a lot of uh, tension and I know people that have gone freaking really bad injuries on their hands because they did it wrong or even the spring exploded so I'm gonna do is take those off and release it and it's not too bad as long as you do it like in the right order so see so yeah, I put you right on the okay so once again the button the yellow button's pushed in I already told him you need some brakes too so Yeah, usually you can get one on with the impact. I think I go wrench. Jesus, this one might be actually be a nice easy one. So I had to do one. The clevis and the yoke was completely seized on. Oh, I had to heat the shit out of it to get off. And this is actually just a one, it's on max lock adjuster, but it's got one yoke. So that's also nice. A lot of times, most of the time I should say, is that it leaks and that's why people change them. But in this, this instance, the emergency spring was broken so you have no air leaks. So when I get one that leaks, I'll show you because ideally you can either have, the, it depends how bad the leak is to, because a lot of times you push the L button and it's pissing out and you're not able to do that. So sometimes I have to cage it or if it's just a little leak, you can uh, do what I'm doing, just kind of keep the truck running. You just don't want it to like get low and pop, pop the button on its own and your fingers in the way, so. But it'd be safe. can also uh, I'll probably adjust the brake too but right now it's loose on the mount so I'm gonna go pop pop the uh, uh, pop the yellow button out so it's gonna push this forward pop this off and then there won't be any you have to worry about any tension or pressure
actually, I'm just thinking that that's broken, so there's actually not a whole lot of tension in there. So that kind of defeats the purpose I was just explaining. But that's what I would do normally. So, because usually this spring isn't broken, a little ass backwards here. But, um, all right, so there's no tension. You got a carter pin, can't see it, but behind here, pushes out. Usually they're a pain. Usually they're seized up. <clears throat> This one's loose. Oh, this one's gonna be better. These are always seized. All right, so this, this will come out. So you got two lines. You got the service, which is close to the four forward of the can then you have the emergency so you just want to either make note on which one goes where because you can see the they're offset a little bit Let me get you in a little closer one's closer to the front so just be aware of that when you put them back Here's a new one. Comes with a new yoke. These are these are 30 30 brake cans. So these are the ones that are very common. Usually carry a few. So what I do, let's see. You want to measure, since the spring's broken, it's not pushing out. So you want to measure the distance. Usually, I usually, if you get like four inches. So, this is pulled out all the way. This isn't, so you kind of, we got three. Uh, 
before. So let's measure it. Actually what I do, I'll screw this all the way down, cut it, and then back it off. It kind of re-threads itself so you can put the yoke back on. Super common breakdown. So at least if you can do this yourself, you can keep one on. Don't need a whole lot of tools. Just gonna know how to do it. Video is gonna be me screwing this. Yeah, because if you measured this here, you'd be off a good inch and a half. So make sure you pull it out. Usually you only have to do this when they're broken, the spring is broken. So, you got four inches from the ground. Um, so, you just kind of mark it, cut it. I feel like whenever I wear safety glasses, is when the sparks go underneath me. I could just sit there with no glasses, not a problem. Sure you cut it this way the direction of the blades going you got too many scars trying to do a quick the wrong way and and cut this on my hand so the reason why i screw this down because it threads a little fucked up now so backing this off will help re-thread the end Threaded. It'll go right on. And you can look like this is out about a half inch. So I just want to make it the same as the other one. Keep it loose for now. You, when you're all done, then you'll tighten it up. Now, so watch out. The key will be addressed the same way. So they never move this around. So you just replace these, put some goop on it, some thread tape. And just make sure you put them the same angle as it is, as they were. So if you're looking at this at 12 o'clock. Alright, so the fittings, if you look, 
This one's about, I don't know, one o'clock. And I lied. This one's more one of two o'clock. This one's one o'clock. So just make sure that's the way you put it back in here. Okay, so. I do. Put. Where the fuck is it? There. Now, the yellow button's still pulled out. You can also adjust these if you have to move it a little bit, which I do. Okay. Now you're gonna push the yellow button in. Can you um? You want to push the yellow button in? You don't need to talk right here? No, I've had it out. It should be fine. Thanks. Bam. Uh, no.
Okay. Just these a little more. Alright, now you just adjust the brakes and you're done after you tighten this. 